Today, we're talking about Gerald Genta. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Watch Wearing. Today, we're talking about Gerald Genta, one of the most famous watch designers in history. Before we start, what do you think about Gerald Genta? Gerald Genta is probably one of the most well-known watch designers in the world right now. Uh, if you ask most people to name another watch designer, they probably wouldn't be able to come up with any names. But he's designed thousands and thousands of watches over his career. And obviously some of his designs are very well known right now. But um, I'm very ready to look into some of his uh, portfolio and look at some of the, the more notable designs that he's done. To me, the whole being of Gerald Genta feels like this scene from Back to the Future where Marty McFly was performing this song, Johnny Be Good, against um, a, a room full of people who are utterly surprised or shocked. And then at the end, he goes like, I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. But your kids are gonna love it. So that's my impression. Yeah, of, it was before his time, you yeah. know. Like. Yeah, I fully agree. It's like to me, Joel Genta has always been like the bad boy of yeah. watch uh, of the watch design industry. He's designing designs for oftentimes not for the mainstream, not for people, not for popular popularity. Um, he designs things because he likes it, and uh, often that might mean that design might be ahead of his time. So. Mm -hmm. Why don't we uh, go through some of his watches today? Um, obviously, everyone knows of Joe Genta and the watches he's designed, and obviously the most two, the two most popular watches we have here, uh, the Royal Oak Jumbo, as well as the Nautilus. But um, given there's so many videos talking about these two watches online, why don't we uh, talk about something else? So today we have three very different watches from three distinct eras of his career. Yeah, the first one is the, the Universal Genève Pour Outer. Um, it's one of the earlier watches that he had designed. So I think he actually designed this watch uh, in his early 20s. So this watch came out in the mid 50s yeah. and um, apparently it was um, made by Universal for the airline SAS. Uh, for the pilots because at that time they were uh, just started a, a new airline route which flies over the North Pole and that's why the um, watch itself is called the Pole Router yeah. and um, you know back then they were faced with a problem um, with their watches because when they fly over the North Pole the magnetic field was a bit uh, strong. Too, strong. too strong so uh, they developed this watch which has a uh, good anti-magnetic properties to it. Mm. Obviously, you know, Genta was um, not involved in the movement design, but at the same time, he's designed the aesthetics for this watch. And I think it has a very strong look to it um, with a distinct sort of, you know, what do you call it? The, the rehalt? Or? Yeah, yeah. The index, index ring. Yeah. Like ring, this, yeah. This, this, this model doesn't have like an engraving um, there, but I think one of the latest ones over here with the steel version, this one has like a very distinct uh, engraving on the rehalt. It shows detail in design. When you look at the magnifying glass, it is bulbous on the inside, unlike some other brand, which is bulbous on the outside. Mm. So it's smooth to the touch when you when you handle the crystal. Back in the 50s, right, like this would not have been considered a dressy watch because it's, it's quite adorned. The size isn't that small. So back, back in the day, dressy watches were three-handers. You Oftentimes, you wouldn't even have a date. Uh, and maybe even smaller, like 32, 33 millimeters. So, you know, I still think back at the time, it, in those days, this is a sports watch. Yeah, considered a sporty pilot watch. Mm. And I think this model was actually used to be called the um, yeah, the, the Polar, Polar Router before, yeah. because they were flying over the, the pole, it was called the Polar Route over the poles. Mm. And then they afterwards changed it to Polar Router. And actually, quite impressively, had 55 hours of power reserve. So, very interesting. I think uh, one of the, the, the things that stand out for me is definitely the, tra the trapezium-shaped mm. uh, date window. Some of these uh, pole routers actually have different shaped date windows. Some of them are actually circles, some are uh, tra trapezoids. So um, they've had released many, many configurations over the years. So what that means for collectors is that there's actually a lot of them out in the market. So if you're up for buying a Gerald Genta design, there's, there's a lot to choose from, which yeah, means it's also very affordable. Very <laughs> So why don't we fast forward, you know, another 20 years into the 70s 
when uh, Joe Genta designed the engineer for IWC? Why don't we start off with this, uh, this original one, Jumbo, the, the reference 1832. Um, why don't you talk, talk a little bit about it? I mean, you're, I know you're really into uh, engineers. So I guess back in the 50s is when IWC had their original engineer. Yeah. And I then, think it looked more like this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That one's a bit more dressy. But IWC got Gerald Genta to come in to renew their design. And this is the result. At that time, I don't think it was very popular because it was so big and hef hefty, right? Yeah. I they didn't sell that many of it. Yeah. Fashion was definitely different back, back in it those is, days. Yeah. But which, now, is, which is why they had the, the name Jumbo. Hmm. And now it's become one of the most sought, of, sought after engineers that uh, is out there. Yeah, I think it has a, a very sober design to it, right? If you contrast it to some of the other Genta sports watches out there, uh, this one definitely has like a bit of a workhorse feel to it, a more practical feel to it mm -hmm. that the others don't have. I like that um, the bezel itself is very flat, but also has the little screw holes there. It's a really nice adornment and it kind of speaks to uh, a more consistent design language that's been expressed throughout Genta's career. Mm. You also find these um, released slightly later than the original one. So these are slightly smaller, mid-sized, 35 millimeters. Um, 34 actually. 34? Yeah. 34 millimeters, yeah. But it wears actually really well on the wrist. It doesn't feel like a 34. And this one even has a graph paper mm. kind of paint inspired by the uh, engineers. Um, where, the, where they learned their name from. Actually, speaking of engineer, this is the watch that got me into watch collecting. It's my first proper watch that I got um, for my wedding. So this is Janta's engineer got me into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly you, you're a big fan of the series. Yes, yeah. I am, yeah. So what's the difference between this one and, uh, and, and these ones? This one is obviously a bit more big and hefty. Mm. At that time, I really like like having a lot of weight on your wrist, I think it feels really satisfying. And then eventually, um, one of my friends from the Horology Club knows that I like Engineer and he offered this to me, um, which I appreciate. And this, I wear this a lot now. Yeah, I think that feels really nice on yeah. the wrist. But I think this is kind of true to the jumbo in the sense that it feels very substantial on the wrist. Mm, yes, it does. And why don't we uh, also talk about Fast forward another 10 years, 10, 15 years, and move on to these uh, Mickey Mouses. Mm. So I, I think these watches were released part of the, was it the Fantasy Collection? Yeah, the Retro Fantasy Collection. Back but, in the um, 80s. I think one of the more important things to remember is Genta was designing watches for other brands. And you know he's done this for Universal, he's done this for IWC. But for this series, this is actually under his own name and his own brand. Mm. I think mean, he started his own brand in the late 60s, mm. but it was uh, back in the 80s when he got the rights to put the Disney characters on the watches that he started developing this retro fantasy series. Mm. So two very distinct things in the series is firstly, the Disney character, and secondly, the use of the retrograde jump hour movements. Yeah. Right? Mm. So not only has this, he used his movements in the, the retro fantasy series, he also has a lot of other retrograde um, watches that were released in the 80s and the 90s that are pretty much like a, a signature for his own brand. And right now, even you know, after uh, Bulgari has bought his brand, yeah, to the modern day, they're, they're still releasing these uh, retrograde jump hour watches with Disney characters on them. I think this, is, this really shows what kind of a guy he was, what kind of designer he was. I mean, this is, when you think about this like, Back in the 80s, it was even unheard of to put a cartoon character on a watch. On an expensive watch. On an expensive <laughs> watch, yes. And he just goes ahead and just, just does it because yeah. you know he's not thinking about selling watches. He just like he just likes it, he just thinks it's fun. He's and combining cartoons, complications, precious metal with all art. together with art. Yeah. And, and diamonds. A, and diamonds <laughs> and, and yeah. pearls. And yeah. It's not the watch that you you know, just give to your kids, right? yeah. <laughs> even though it has a cartoon character on it. Yeah. It's quite cool to put the character's hands as the actual hands of the of the watch. It seems and then so... it jumps back and then so it swings the golf club. Yeah, it, it, seem, it seems so common sense now, but before it was designed, I'm sure it, it, would have been, it wouldn't have been easy to come up with that. Mm. 
So out of these three models, uh, which ones are, are your favorite? Well, mine is going to be obviously the Ranjimi yeah. <laughs> because of the personal connection mm. to it. Personally, I think I'd pick the, the, the Fantasy, the Mickey Mouses. I think I just, uh, I like the quirkiness of it. You know, I, I really, it really resonates with me, the whole idea of just keeping it fun. You know, sometimes the watches should, shouldn't be so serious. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think my favorite is probably the Paul Router. But I love vintage watches, right? So the vintage, vintage designs uh, and, and the feel of it is so hard to get in a modern watch. So especially with Universal, which is practically defunct nowadays. Mm. So I think these watches represent great value. And uh, I love to own one of them. Yeah. Do you, do you think, do you find it's, um, some people might shy away from vintage watches because they f might feel like, oh, you know, this, this company's not around anymore. If I have any issues with it, then I will get it fixed. Do you have, do you feel like, what would you say to those comments? Well, I think um, firstly, with a capable watchmaker, they can you know, probably always fix these watches and they can fashion their own components to uh, help fix the movements, right? But yeah, you're right, you don't get as uh, a good and official sort of um, after, service, after sale service as you get from a brand that still exists. Mm. Um, but you know, this is just something you have to live with. Mm. If you like also, vintage stuff. I also feel like if you want a watch with the accurate movement, it's not probably the place that you're looking for. Mm. for one. Anyway, <laughs> you like it for the, um, you buy it for the historical um, meaning of the watch mm. and uh, a tangible history of uh, aviation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You just can't get a modern watch with a vintage feel to it. Mm. Mm. That's irreplaceable. Mm. Okay, so we've seen these very notable designs from Gentis Courier today. Mm. I guess it shows that one can really, you know, get a, a piece of his design without really breaking the bank. Mm. Uh, um, most of these watches on the table right now sell so for a fraction of, you know, the price that you, you need to pay if you want to get like a Nautilus or a Royal Oak. Right? Mm. So I think people, you know, should consider these designs uh, if they want to get a taste of Genta. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're a, if you're a fan of Gerald Genta just as a designer, there's so many different designs that he, uh, he's done in the past and we've just only covered a tiny fraction. Yes, yeah. these are also good watches on its own as well with uh, their own design language mm. and I think they are a gem to explore if you spend the time to look for them. Yeah, and at the end of the day, when everyone's looking you know, one way, it, it, sometimes it pays to look the other way. Yeah, so apparently Genta has designed upwards to you know, 10,000 different models. Mm. So. Don't just focus on two. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to find out more about us, check out our website, www.thehorologyclub.com. Also find us on Instagram at the.horology.club.